Hey everybody, this is Perch. Um, I've done these videos, I've done a few of them, talking about villains. And in my mind, if you think about some of the struggle that uh, comics have had, the mainstream comics, superhero comics, it's the downgrade of the villain. Um, it, you know, it, it, it's kind of, do you remember the movie Unbreakable? If you ever watched that film, um, there was a point made, and whether you like the film or not, I think it was a, it was a good point, where Samuel Jackson is talking about kind of the you know, archetype of a superhero, and what it means to be heroic and the fact that a villain, you know, is, is necessary for the hero to struggle and overcome that that's part of the hero's journey. It's, it's necessary. Um, you know, they were trying to portray the, you know, that, that he had lost his mind and everything else through his experiences, but, um, it, it, there's a lot of truth to that. And I think in many cases, if you look at a lot of big two comics, the villains are often either downgraded, they're, they're part of a joke. It's the, the quippiness of the MCU taken into print form, um, or they're just very generic. You know, that's, that's the problem with an Orcus is it's just a bunch of, you know, Iron Man looking Sentinels and kind of random goons in you know, costumes that are off orange. And, and there are a few, you got Nimrod, you got the Omega Sentinel, you've got, you have a couple of characters in there that are bigger, but by and large, it's just kind of this homogenous mass of people. And, uh, you know, there's the new uh, Thunderbolts comic that comes out. And this is the best example. It's like, hey, we're fighting Nazis. There's some Nazis back. Red Skull is doing Nazi things. But the problem is the the comic becomes a lot less about the Red Skull, who in theory should be a threatening kind of big time villain. And it becomes a lot more about just these kind of, you know, henchmen, just legions and legions of henchmen that are kind of, you know, running in and shooting things. In a lot of cases are... Just, just written as kind of dopey or, you know, it's, it's not even that they're written to, you know, the, the heroes will say, I'm sick of these fascists as they're like literally blowing them in the face, um, with guns. So get, get your mind out of there. Um, but you know, the, the characters have no real personality. They're cardboard cutouts. They could be aim robots for, for all intents and purposes. And you, you need threatening villains and villains need to do villainous things. You know, there was a, a question I got um, <clears throat> a while back uh, from a friend saying, hey, if, you know, it, is it okay for a villain to use the N-word in a comic? And the answer is kind of twofold. Number one, hey, if it's a comic that's going out for kids in the mass market, you probably don't want to put the N-word in there. And probably, not probably you don't, because that's going to that, that's gonna be an issue. Just getting the comic sold from a practical sense, that's that's dumb. But in terms of would a villain use that word? Probably, yeah. I mean, it depends on the villain. But again, the, the, the word is villain. The, the villains are evil. They do evil things. They will say evil things. That is, that is why they are villains. The villains are not, you know, just normal people like you and me. I, I, it, it feels like in some very weird universe, the deconstruction of the villain, like, oh, the, you know, once this was a, a good person that just went astray. It's like people forgot about the went astray. And it's like, well, you know, I, maybe the villains are good people. Um, right now, there's this kind of weird phenomenon where, um, you know, um, there's a, there was the, you know, the video about the, the comic store retailers complaining about a lot of the comics. And, you know, they got dogpiled. And then uh, a bunch of other comic pros like, hey, 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 don't shit where you eat, you know, kind of thing. <laughs> and it seemed to quiet down. And then uh, Mark Millar uh, comes in and does an interview with the guy. And then everybody's like, aha, can't attack the retailer, but we can attack Mark. And so there is a, a barrage, I mean, a lot of people now posting about why Mark is a terrible, awful, sus, right-leaning, et cetera, person. But the common thread in all that is, is stuff like this. And I'm going to read it to you. It says, are y'all, I, I, I don't, I get enough of that here in Texas. I don't need on Twitter too. Are y'all really surprised about Mark Millar? This is the same guy who wrote a story where a super villain kidnaps a cop's kids, threatens to reveal to the world that his son was gay and the daughter had an abortion and then injects sperm from the gay brother into the daughter to impregnate her. That was a nemesis. That, that was in uh, Nemesis. Um, truly anus. I mean, several crimes there. You know, uh, you, it's, 
it's weird. The uh, they seem to put a lot of emphasis to reveal to the world the son was gay. Yeah, bad villain behavior, sure. Also, kidnapping, uh, forcibly impregnating someone. I, I mean, many many problems in there. But it was the supervillain that did this. The supervillain. It goes on. He also had a supervillain go back in time to assault a female hero when she was a child. Like, dude, this is all on brand for him. LOL. Uh, again, supervillain. Like, literally, this, this character is portrayed as one of the most evil people in the world. In the case of the the character went back in time, that was the doctor in the authority, that character gets thoroughly murdered. Um, it, the, the villain, the heroes overcome the threat and defeat the villain. That's kind of the point of the villain. Now, if the question is, hey, would you ever do what this villain does? Then yeah, no. But w what would you do that a villain would do? Here's another comment. Mark Ballar writes incredibly sick villains. Why are his villains so evil as opposed to the Joker? All right. The Joker has murdered, what's the Joker's body count? Hundreds of thousands, right? At this point, I mean, it's it's not small. The Joker has murdered people. I, I believe there's some implied rape in there. There's uh, all, all, Joker's done all kinds of stuff. At what point did the Joker become... Now, you know, people post this panel I did a video about where the Joker is, uh, you know, basically telling off the Red Skull. This is back in the uh, kind of what the amalgam world. This is a, a John Byrne book. Uh, tells you how far back it was. And the Red Skull's like, I'm not a Nazi. I wouldn't sink that low. And it's a fun gag because it's the Joker. And the joke in there is that the Joker has no problem, you know, brutally assaulting, murdering, killing, raping, all like everything. But you know, not a Nazi. But people take that panel and like, this is why the Joker has, you know, a redeemable aspect. No. What what are you talking about? There, you know, it goes on and on and on of people talking about how uh, Mark Blar writes villains and these, and including comic writers. And that should terrify you if a comic writer is writing hey, it's really a problem if, uh, if, if the villain is written like a villain. Because that layers into the problem we have with comics today, which is, yeah, the villain should do horrible things, say horrible things, do all of that. Now, you have to print this comic and put it out into the market where there are kids, so unless you have an adult label on it or, you know, you've worked that stuff out, that, that could be an issue. There was a Mark Bar comic at one point that came out that had a penis in it, and you, we were not told in the store, and that caused a, a brief issue. But, you know, if it's going to go on the shelf with everything else and reach with kids, then, you know, probably don't want to use the N-word, probably don't want to show the brutal rape, but the, the character doing these things, and hell, if the character, if the comic is for mature readers, which the vast majority of Millar's comics are, Nemesis definitely is and is labeled as such, then that that's what the villain is supposed to be. If the hero was running around doing this stuff, then I think you have a different argument. Then I think you could go, Hey, wait a minute. Why is this? Why is he uh, glorifying, you know, this stuff, but it is the villain. It's clearly identified as the villain. The villain is also set up and, and has some victories, but then is defeated. And it's, it, 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 really, really fits with when you open up a, a comic, particularly from Marvel, the the villains are just generic aliens or random kind of racist mobs or other things. You have, I mean, so many of the comics make statements around, this is why I love punching Nazis and hate fascists, as they're beating up, you know, what looks like kind of January 6th protesters. Uh, again, you... You, these, you know, uh, the henchman of the Red Skull is clearly not a good guy, but it's not a compelling bad guy either. It's just goon number 845. You need to have intense, strong villains. You need to have them so the heroes have something to overcome. It's not that complicated. This is Superhero Comics 101. And, you know, I, I've speculated it. Why? Why do why? Why are we in this state? 
And the only conceivable answer when you see posts like this is the writers are terrified of writing a, a evil villain because some dumbass is going to say, I'll bet they're like the villain. Does, you know, Mark Lars has also written Hit Girl, has written The Ambassadors, has written all kinds of heroes who rise to the occasion and do heroic things. Do, does, do those characters also reflect on him? This video, by the way, is not meant as a big defense of Mark Millar. He can defend himself. He's perfectly capable. But it is absolutely weird that people are dragging out of the woodwork like, I always knew as was a bad guy because he wrote these villains that were bad. I mean, okay. God damn, I hope nobody goes back and looks at uh, old Stanley Jack Kirby comics because I've, I've got bad news for you. They introduce this giant guy who soars through space and eats planets and literally, literally consumes trillions of people constantly. Like, that's how he survives. It is, is a giant space cannibal who murders planets. I mean, think about what he's doing to the environment. This character, Galactus, is is the worst global warming, environmental catastrophe, cannibal monster. Seems to have no empathy for humankind or anything, or aliens or anyone. I mean, this this dude, I mean, a lot of those planets were non-white planets. Just got to, just, just had to throw that in there. I mean, it, this guy is bad. I, I, this is common sense stuff. Heroes need villains. Villains do evil things. The person who writes a villain is not evil. J.K. Rowling is not Voldemort. Stephen King is not that Pennywise the Clown character or, you know, the... <laughs> or any of these else, any of these other characters. Randall Flagg. Uh, it, it, it's not that hard. Anyway. I, I found it wild. We're, we're living in a crazy time, but there are so many many posts and people just crawling out of the woodwork now. Just so thankful that Millar inserted himself into this so they can stop being, you know, stop having to worry about attacking the reseller who is literally their channel of sales of comics and can instead do a much safer thing, which is try and dogpile on to, uh, to Millar. Um, good luck with that one. But, uh, but anyway, but it's, <laughs> it's not, boy, his writing's kind of formulaic. It's not, he, uh, he, he, he does the same stuff or his, uh, his twists are off. None of that. It is, he writes mean villains. Guy is a monster. Anyway, thanks for listening.